Hello and welcome to IR Thinker, where international affairs are discussed. Today we're going to speak about Romania's energy security and the Black Sea, since it is a region with many challenges and opportunities where Bulgaria, Georgia, Romania, Russia, Turkey and Ukraine meet. So it's a very interesting region. I also feel that Romania's role in the region requires more attention. Therefore, my guest today is Roxana Kaliminta. Hello, Roxana. Hi, Martin. Thank you for having me today. Roxana served as the Deputy Secretary General of Gas Infrastructure Europe from 2017 to 2024. Uh, prior to this, uh, she worked with Romania's gas transmission operator, Transgas, where she was responsible for the company's engagement with EU institutions and governmental bodies. Additionally, she has experience working in the Romanian Parliament as an advisor on international relations and economic affairs. Roxana is also a visiting lecturer at the Academy of Economic Studies in Bucharest, Romania. Consultancy Intelligence Publishing recognizes Roxana as one of the top 30 female energy market analysts globally. So I think Roxana is fully qualified to give us a few interesting ideas about this particular topic. Let's start with the first question and, and let's speak about overall. What is the Romania's strategy in the Black Sea? And, uh, you know, we have tensions in the, in the region, especially with the U Ukraine and Russia. So how this influence the whole picture of Romania's energy security? Martin, thank you for uh, this very nice introduction. Now, uh, going to your question, I think we'll see Romania focus on energy security and independence in the foreseeable future. It's all about having a mix of local energy production, preferably, but not exclusively renewable, a high diversity of energy carriers, origins and routes, and forging strong alliances. For example, the Neptune gas field, it's a huge part of this, even though uh, the project uh, had attracted a lot of attention. But by tapping into those offshore resources, Romania can increase domestic production and reduce reliance on Russian gas. So I would say this is a really pretty big deal uh, given the current ge um, geopolitical landscape. Then I would also like to mention projects like the Brua pipeline, uh, which connect Romania to neighboring countries, but also help diversify those supply routes and then strengthen energy security. Now, uh, I am coming from gas. This is what I know best. But let's not forget renewables, because there are many people out there that are seeing growing potential for offshore wind in the Black Sea. Up to 76 gigawatts are possible. So tapping into this potential could be a real game changer in the region. By the way, I am uh, born at the Black Sea coast uh, in Constanza. So for someone like me, I would love to see such progress happening in our region. So talking about partnerships, I think this is certainly part of Romania's uh, strategy. NATO, the EU are going to play a crucial role here. And what's about uh, Romania's energy security at the moment? How would you describe it? Like, what sort of uh, what sort of source is the main energy source for Romania at the moment? Because we always speak about oil, gas, renewables, and that mix. But it's, I think, also good to clarify how is the situation now. Well, Romania is the second largest producer of natural gas in the European Union after the Netherlands. The Netherlands will uh, reduce uh, its production in the Groningen field. So Romania is going to be uh, the principal producer of natural gas in the region. However, before we untap those natural gas resources in the Black Sea, Romania still needs to import uh, around 20% of natural gas 
from outside Europe that has been also coming from Russia in the past. Now we talk about diversification. Um, of course, Romania is also relying on other solid fossil fuels like coal, for example, uh, also oil. But as the European um, energy transition says, we have to give up on those highly polluting resources and move to a cleaner society. And this is where I am uh, now trying to point to it's all about having a stable energy mix that can be clean, but at the same time ensure security for the people. I can mention that uh, Romania's electricity um, is uh, coming 50% uh, from renewables currently, with wind with wind uh, contributing uh, with the highest uh, resource in this energy. So it's win-win. We get highly, I mean, um, uh, we, we get good jobs in the society. We attract investments uh, from outside Europe. We also produce some of these new technologies in uh, Romania. It's all about providing people with prosperity and uh, with well-being at the end of the day, securing them a, a reliable um, and predictable lifestyle. As we know, it's a, it's a big difference to plan all those ambitious projects during the peaceful times and during the difficult times. So what would you say about the impact of the war in Ukraine on energy security of Romania and possible plans in the Black Sea? Well, uh, the war has highlighted the risks of being too dependent on a single supplier. And that's been a wake-up call for Romania and the entire EU. And so, like the whole of the EU, Romania has become even more focused on securing its energy independence. Uh, when you look, Martin, at uh, the Black Sea, the conflict complicates things a bit. On one hand, it's the urgency to develop new energy projects to boost domestic production. And on the other hand, the security situation makes it more challenging to actually move forward with these offshore projects. So there's a lot of concern about protecting infrastructure and ensuring safety of operations in a region that's becoming increasingly militarized. But at the same time, uh, the conflict also has uh, pushed uh, the EU and NATO uh, for energy, uh, to look out for energy diversification. And I believe Romania is well positioned to contribute to that. What are the risks and opportunities for Romania in balancing its energy ambitions in the Black Sea when it comes to Russia and Russia's Russian interests? Even though I am an optimistic person, let me start with the risks uh, here. So uh, you've got potential geopolitical tensions. Uh, Russia sees the Black Sea as a strategic area. So there is a chance of security threats, such as cyber attacks on energy infrastructure or even military posturing. Uh, we've seen drone invasions of the Romanian airspace. So this could certainly delay or disrupt projects like Neptune Deep. There is also the risk of leaning too much on fossil fuels, uh, which could clash with EU's climate and energy goals. But the opportunities are big. Uh, Romania could reduce its dependence on Russian gas and become a key energy hub for Southeast Europe. So this would boost its impact in both the EU and NATO making it, um, I would say, a pretty reliable uh, partner. On top, uh, with the growing focus on energy diversification, the revenue from the projects of, uh, in fossil energy could help further fund renewable energy initiatives. At the end of the day, I believe in uh, creating a balanced energy mix from which the society can benefit and can prosper. 
We also have uh, interesting na uh, neighbors around Romania, and that's Turkey, for instance, Bulgaria. So how does Romania's Black Sea energy potential influence the diplomatic relations with your neighbors? I like to look at this with uh, a bright, um, with from a bright angle, and so I think Romania's Black Sea energy potential could help strengthen these diplomatic ties with Turkey and Bulgaria. All three have got a shared interest in tapping into the region's resources. That opens the door for more cooperation on things like infrastructure, offshore energy wind, pipelines, and energy grids. Sure, um, there might be some competition here and there, but overall it gives them a reason to work together, especially as everyone's looking to diversify energy sources and cut down reliance on Russian supplies. So I would say it's a win-win for regional partnerships. And are there any ideas about having joint projects like Bulgaria, Romania, Turkey together? Um, I believe the cooperation with Bulgaria here is key. As I mentioned, Romania's offshore wind potential is massive, around 96 gigawatts, so the World Bank says. So that's a game changer. But if we don't cooperate together by tapping into common uh, territories in the Black Sea, then we can't exploit these kind of potentials with Bulgaria. When it comes to Turkey, I would uh, have to look into it. How would you describe overall the Romanian's role for the European Union as a potential energy base? Maybe can Romania export energy to EU countries? That's maybe the second question. Absolutely. Uh, I, uh, this is also the reason uh, why I came back to Romania. Uh, I worked for uh, more than seven years in Brussels. I truly believe in its potential in the energy transition. Consider the strategic location of uh, Romania. It could become a key energy uh, hub in uh, Europe. It can link both gas and renewables from the Black Sea to the rest of Europe. I mentioned natural gas projects. Romania has a huge history in natural gas in Europe and continues to demonstrate that with its number one position soon, uh, with its soon number one position as natural gas producer in Europe. Now, when we talk about natural gas, we think about decarbonization nowadays. Well, the natural gas from the Black Sea can be transformed into blue hydrogen if we capture and store CO2. We also talked about Romania's offshore wind potential, which is around 96, per, uh, 96 gigawatts. Consider that the surplus of electricity from this offshore wind in the Black Sea can be transformed in green hydrogen as well. So we now have blue hydrogen and green hydrogen. What do we do with hydrogen? Well, first of all, we are supporting EU's strategy uh, on hydrogen, on delivering those 10 million tons of, hy of hydrogen domestically produced. But we can also power up the economy. We can power up the ref refineries, transport, the port of Constanza, the hydrogen infrastructure along the Danube and in the region. And more than that, in an ideal world, in my eyes, Dobroja, the region along the Black Sea, can become even a hydrogen valley that can attract innovation, investments, create new jobs, and boost prosperity for local communities. That sounds uh... That sounds great because uh, I think uh, Romania is slightly under-researched, so not many people know about that potential. So I'm very happy that you mentioned all, mentioned all those projects and possible uh, interesting ideas about energy security and energy transition. But let's speak about uh, some economic uh, regulatory issues. We know that 
Romania is not the richest country of Europe and it needs investment, especially foreign direct investments. So what would you say about the internal regulatory hurdles or, or issues that Romania faces to attract those investments? Well, it's pretty straightforward. It's the instability around its fiscal policies. Investors need clear, stable tax frameworks. But Romania has had some back and forth on royalties and taxes, which creates uncertainty. Then it's the complex and often slow permitting process which can delay projects and frustrate investors. And it's the regulatory uncertainty uh, when we mention, for example, offshore wind, as Romania is still developing its policies in that area. But I'm confident that streamlining these processes and offering more predictable regulations would help bring in more international investment. Absolutely. And I think it's also a job for us academics uh, to critically review those uh, information sources and, and offer some possible solution or, or some improvements that we can contribute to the policy and decision making processes. So the next question is about um, economic benefits. And I would like to ask you, Roxana, how can Romania balance the economic benefits of exploiting its Black Sea energy resources uh, with the need of sustainable development, because sometimes this is sort of an uh, issue that not all the countries can handle. That's right. Um, and um, I think uh, we can talk here about short term benefits and long term benefits. When we think about uh, the energy transition, this is a journey. So. Um, First, the short term, we agreed that tapping into natural gas resources can boost both the economy and energy security. But to do this responsibly, Romania needs to invest in cleaner technologies like carbon capture and storage to reduce environmental impact. Second, the long term. Romania should accelerate offshore wind development. This offers a renewable, clean energy source that aligns with the country's and continent's sustainability goals. And third, it's about the environment. The strict respect for environmental regulations and best practices. It's about protecting marine, marine ecosystems during offshore development. And if Romania does that, then it would send the right signal that Romania is serious about sustainability. So it's the responsible use of fossil fuels, renewable energy production, and environmental protection for both economic growth and a sustainable future. How do you see Romania's public support for those ideas? Like, what's the mood uh, among population, among people, and uh, how do you how do you see this uh, as a driver for these ambitious projects? Well, in Romania, um, it's about prices at the end of the day. So. Um, we are not coming, and you mentioned that uh, very uh, clearly, uh, from a very, uh, let's say, uh, prosperous background. Uh, if you if you look at the country's GDP compared to other countries in Europe, but uh, there is an accelerated hunger and passion for in the Romanian entrepreneurship environment. So people are very keen to invest in new innovations and technologies, and people are starting to become more and more aware of protecting the environment. Now, there have been billions and billions coming from the European Union with the aim of accelerating this energy transition. Romania has the potential to tap into those uh, resources. 
the economy here is already seeing a boost from this acceleration of new um, companies. For example, when you look at uh, wind um, power development, at solar panels, even development of battery storage. So um, it is um, with mixed feelings sometimes, because at the end of the day, uh, yes, we all want to have um, a fantastic society, progressive towards the energy transition. But when it comes to paying the electricity bills and paying more for greener energy, I don't think that is the will of any politician to impose such um, conditions for um, its population. The next question is slightly pessimistic, but I think we should answer it. And it's about the potential economic ramifications for Romania if it fails to effectively exploit the Black Sea energy strategy. So what's your, what's your stance on that? Well, um, I can say that Romania would miss out on becoming more energy independent and would still have to rely on expensive imports especially as Europe is moving away from Russian gas. So that could leave Romania paying higher prices and can be more vulnerable to global market swings. Then um, there's the lost revenue. Those resources could bring in serious money that could be reinvested into our infrastructure, renewables, and other important areas. So all these aspects would take Romania's head off as a strategic and reliable partner. Finally, it's not about just losing the money. It's about missing a major opportunity for growth and impact. What is the main driver of failure? For instance, in some countries, it's the money. In some countries, it's a political will. Uh, in some countries, it might be some sort of geopolitical competition. So let's theorize a little bit. If there is a potential failure, and we already mentioned the risk, what is the driver of the failure in Romania? I think um, it is about not having the right mindset. And with that, I mean, let's leave it as it is. It doesn't bother us. So business as usual is still fine. The lack of curiosity, how would it be if we did it differently and with better results? And lack of knowledge on how to do that and lack of good questions that can actually open up new doors and uh, Re raising some uh, some uh, good light bulbs in our brains that, oh, I didn't think about that. How about we do it this way? One of the particular driver might be technological innovation in Romania. And that's my next question, because we know that Black Sea requires sort of deep water drilling to extract the energy. So what technological innovations are crucial for Romania to overcome those challenges? with the drilling in the Black Sea? Well, uh, I'm not an engineer, uh, but uh, there are common sense practices, I feel. Uh, first, advanced drilling technology that can operate in extreme conditions is a must, given the depth and pressure in the Black Sea. Robotics and remote controlled equipment are crucial for minimizing risks and improving efficiency in such challenging environments. Then there's seismic imaging uh, technology uh, that helps identify and map out oil and gas reserves in a more accurate way before even drilling begins. So that helps reduce the chances of any costly mistakes. And finally, innovations in carbon capture and storage. Um, I believe that 
this can help make these operations more environmentally friendly. Let's uh, let's take it from a different direction now, and let's let's uh, theorize that the black seed drilling is going, and and there is a lot of energy found in the black sea, and Romania is happy about it. What sort of improvements for the infrastructure are needed so Romania can effectively use that energy? Because many times uh, there is sort of discovery of energy, but then the question is how to get this energy to customers and how to monetize it. Absolutely. When you develop new gas capacities, uh, the gas pipelines would need to be expanded and modernized to efficiently transport offshore gas to both domestic and European markets. More storage facilities would also be crucial to manage seasonal demand. Now, when it comes to offshore wind in the Black Sea, new power grids need to be built and the existing power grids need to be modernized that will allow for the new renewable energy to flow smoothly into the national system and then let the population benefit from these resources that their country has. And a key player here is the port of Constanza. It could become a critical hub for the offshore wind industry by handling the transport of turbines equipment, and servicing vessels. When we upgrade the ports facilities to support these activities, then that would be key for making offshore wind a reality in Romania. Then we were talking about gas and offshore wind electricity. But from these two, we can get blue hydrogen from natural gas and cap- carbon capture storage and green hydrogen from the surplus of electricity. So in order to inject hydrogen into the national gas infrastructure, the pipelines and compressor stations need to be adapted. And so overall, it's about expanding capacity and creating this flexibility to accommodate a good mix of energy resources. Is it possible to name sort of friendly countries that are interested in these projects? There is huge interest. There have been a lot of studies promoted by different high-level institutions in Europe, in America, about the potential of energy in Romania. So the country has already attracted this attention. Um, Now it's about what do we do with it? How open-minded are we? How fair are we towards our society into really leaving our doors open for new investments and helping them facilitate that? We were talking about um, regulatory hurdles. Yes, this is a, a big bottleneck. Uh, so, Roxana, you know, we need the uh, skill workers when we want to develop those uh, high potential projects in Romania. So what is the situation in this sector? I mean, the education, uh, skilled workers, uh, engineers uh, and experts. Then it's about skilled energy force. So, for example, in order for Romania to achieve its climate and energy targets by 2030, we need up to 6,000 skilled workers in green energy industries. Now, Romania has a big problem, from my point of view, with educating its and with, with uh, educating its um, workforce. Only about 15% of Romania's universities offer energy-related fields. So how do you expect to have a growing energy economy when the basics of the society are not solved? Let's talk about environmental issues. Uh, Many people are interested in, because we know when it comes to sea, 
energy, gas, oil, drilling, 99% of people always ask the question, what's about environment? How the country is going to protect it? And what are the issues with those uh, projects in the future? So what's your opinion about how Romania is ready to protect Black Sea environment? Um, so um, indeed, uh, first off, offshore drilling can definitely disturb marine ecosystems. So it's really important to use technologies that keep the environmental impact low. Cleaner drilling methods and solid waste management practices can go a long way in protecting marine life and habitats. Then there is always the risk of oil spills and accidents with any offshore project, really. But to manage that, Romania needs to stick to strict safety standards and have top-notch oil spill response systems ready to go. So uh, regular monitoring and being prepared for emergencies is the basics to keeping those environmental risks in check. But um, here's where things get interesting. Uh, Romania's Black Sea coast uh, on wind. In fact, practically, we are looking at developing around three gigawatts of capacity by 2030. Plans for the first 500 megawatt offshore farms and are underway. So tapping into this resource could be a game changer. Also, in the long run, we try to turn let's say risks into opportunities. And I am I'm uh, thinking here about investing truly and in a real way in carbon capture and storage. That could make a big difference when we talk about a natural gas industry. And especially if Romania wants to produce uh, hydrogen and contribute to the Europeans uh, targets. Um, by capturing CO2 emissions from natural gas, they can significantly reduce the overall environmental impact. And then uh, it would be pretty smart for Romania to reinvest some of the revenue from these energy projects into renewable energy and conservation efforts. That way we can meet today's energy demands while also protecting the environment for the future. Absolutely. And I think Romania can also learn a lot from different countries. Like, for instance, here in Great Britain, uh, there are offshore wind farms uh, for energy and also many projects. And, and just if you go through the history, you can see how difficult it is to build those uh, those projects and it's not easy so i think international cooperation is very welcome in those uh, ideas uh, what's about fishery and tourism uh, we know this is quite important for romania for fisheries on one side uh, the concern is that offshore drilling and construction could disrupt marine habitats which might affect fish populations and, in turn, the livelihoods of those who depend on fishing. On the other side, tourism um, could also take a hit if there are visible signs of industrial activity near coastal areas or, in the worst case, environmental damage like oil spills. Now, to balance this, Romania needs to carefully plan and monitor these activities to minimize disruptions. So this means sticking to strict environmental protections, limiting the impact on fishing zones, and keeping industrial sites away from key tourist areas. I think, as I always like to turn the negative into positive, we can, man, we can say that there is also the opportunity for local communities to benefit economically through new jobs and investments in infrastructure, especially if, if renewable projects are part of the mix. 
Now we talk about uh, reskilling, upskilling, and that has to be for sure part of Romania's long-term workforce and energy strategy. So how might Romania's uh, Black Sea energy security and projects contribute to fulfilling the EU goals? Uh, because we know that Romania lives in a in the European Union, so there are national and supranational goals. First, um, we are pushing to reduce methane emissions uh, from gas projects. There is also um, EU methane regulation, which was just closed this year in the beginning. So Romania will have to comply with those obligations, and that is crucial for lowering the overall carbon footprint. At the same time, Romania is ramping up renewable energy production. Um, wind, solar, hydro, biogas are big opportunities in our region. And I mention here the Black Sea region. Part of this strategy is also to increase energy efficiency and looking at ways to store energy both as hydrogen and through battery technology to stabilize the grid. In my opinion, it's also a very important um, issue with energy efficiency. If we want to uh, save energy, the best way is not to consume it, which means that Romanian people have to be much more responsible in the way they are using energy. Um, really, just don't let your AC on when you leave the house. Make sure the lights are off. Make sure that you plug out all of your electronics when you leave the house. Make sure that you are not heating your apartment and leave the windows open because it's too hot. So uh, these are mentalities with which we have to work. Now, I think for Romania to move into um, uh, the renewable um, sector much faster is also um, important for them to create a more investment-friendly environment with a focus on stable politics and a long-term vision to attract both local and international investments. So I think the big mission that overall Europe has is to balance short-term fossil fuel needs that actually bring that security into the economy with the long-term green goals. And green energy, we know, is very versatile and um, a very intermittent volatile. I'm, I'm glad you mentioned politics because that's my next question. Uh, usually there are opposition to the government in the country, um, but in terms of energy transition, usually those two camps, they, they go in one direction. How is the situation in Romania? We are um, aware of the European funds that are at the table right now. So Romania has just allocated more than 14 million euros this summer into new projects that are looking into battery storage, hydrogen development, solar panels, wind development. So it is doing as much as it can with the resources that we have. And with resources, I mean here, uh, regulatory frameworks with the technological advancement. Now, in my opinion, um, the government could also direct a portion of the revenue from the Black Sea uh, gas project toward local development in the regions most affected by energy activities like building infrastructure, creating jobs, or investing in education and healthcare. This helps ensure that communities also near the Black Sea see the direct benefits of what is happening around them. Second, Romania could set up a national fund that reinvests energy profits into broader 
social and economic projects like renewable energy development, job training, and upgrading public services. And then in this way, the money is spread across the country and supports long-term growth. And finally, transparency. It's all about the transparency and public involvement in how the profits are used. And if people feel like they have a say in where the money goes, it builds trust and ensures that the economic boost from energy development actually benefits everyone. The last question for today's interview, Roxana. You come from practice and you work directly with people involved in energy, energy transition and energy projects. Let's imagine now that you are academic. What would be your recommendation for academics for research in terms of Black Sea energy potential and Romania? I uh, would be the happiest uh, if more attention into Romania is uh, given. And uh, I will take myself as an example, probably, because um, I'm not an academia. But I am now in a period when I am trying to promote, I'm trying to highlight, to showcase the benefits that Romania can bring to the European Union and with its resources, how Romania can provide a much more prosperous society for its citizens. So it's really about talking about the untalked, about the unspoken. And there is a lot to say there. It's all about tapping into uh, data, into figures, into numbers, and connecting the dots, trying to create resemblances, trying to uh, use, I don't know, uh, peak hour of um, statistics, like peak hour of people when uh, they leave work at six, uh, so number of cars on the roads with the carbon footprint at those times. The problem is that very few people are actually digging into the potential of Romania's energy sources and what we can do with that. So I think starting small is already an important step to progress. And then from there, you find out you're not alone. And then the excitement and the progress gets bigger and bigger. Excellent. I, I think that the smaller or small step that uh, we have recorded this episode today might also contribute a little bit to the research of the area. But uh, most importantly, I want to thank you, Roxana, for your insightful thoughts and and practical ideas and thoughts from the practice. This is what academia really needs uh, to, to interact with practitioners. And uh, I hope that uh, some junior researchers and researchers will take this opportunity and write some interesting papers and policy papers about this topic. So again, thank you very much for being on Thinker. Thank you for having me.